Let's get to our five headlines. Number one, Colin Kaepernick is returning to the NFL virtually anyway. EA Sports announced that Kaepernick will be in the new Madden game. Um, you can choose him to quarterback any team you want. Apparently, his his avatar, uh, his his character in the game will have an 81 rating, which the kids tell me is good. So that places him like among the elite quarterbacks in the game, which is obviously absurd. He wasn't an elite quarterback when he played five years ago. Here's the statement from EA Sports. It says, Colin Kaepernick is one of the top free agents in football and a starting caliber quarterback. The team at EA Sports, along with millions of Madden NFL fans, want to see him back in our game. Knowing that our EA Sports experiences are platforms for players to create, we want to make Madden NFL a place that reflects Colin's position and talent, rates him as a starting quarterback, and empowers our fans to express their hope for the future of football. We've worked with Colin to make this possible, and we're excited to bring it all to you today. Um, yeah, I'm sure you did work with Colin Kaepernick for that. I'm sure he was he was fully on board. All in the name of social, social justice. This is, this is all about social justice, racial justice. Um, but getting Colin Kaepernick in the game, you know, it's all, it's all in the... When, when, when he was working with Madden, what, making however much money he was making from them to get himself in a video game, it is all for racial and social justice, okay? And money, but mainly for racial and social justice. Um, now, of course, the claim, as I said, the claim to him being a starting caliber player at the age of 32, five years removed from the game, is ludicrous. Just to give you an idea, Kaepernick lost his starting job to Blaine Gabbert while he was still playing, okay? And if you aren't familiar with pro football, Suffice it to say that losing your starting job to Blaine Gabbert is one of the great humiliations that you can possibly suffer in an athletic context. It's like, it's maybe a notch below losing an arm wrestling competition against your wife. Okay, it's, it's only slightly less humiliating than that. Um, in his final year in the league in 2016, he went one for 10. Uh, he went one in 10, I should say. That was, his, that was actually his record. Uh, as a starting quarterback, he won one game, played played 11, threw 16 touchdowns in 11 games. So again, this was at best, I mean, generously, this was a mediocre player when he was in the league. He had one or two good years, uh, and then it was sort of a, a, a rapid descent from there. Um, he's not going to be any better now that he's 32 and has, has been doing nothing but shooting Nike commercials for the last half a decade. But this all again proves my point that Colin Kaepernick is one of the great con men in American history. And I, I really believe that. I think he's almost at the level of maybe the kid from that the Catch Me If You Can was based on. He's almost at that level. I mean, if you think about it, Colin Kaepernick realized that he was washing out as an NFL starter. He faced a career as a journeyman backup quarterback, you know, signing two or three year, really one or two year contracts in different uh, places around the league, you know, coming in for, for, for training camp and then, and then maybe signing somewhere else. Um, and he didn't, he didn't want to do that. So it was at that moment that he launched his fake social justice crusade. Fast forward five years, He's far richer and more famous than he ever would have been as a professional bench rider. It's, it's a hell of a scam. It really is. Uh, and this is why I've never been able to generate the same sort of anger towards Colin Kaepernick that other conservatives have. I guess because I'm a capitalist at heart. And so when I see this guy running a con like this and raking in millions because of it, um, I can't help but have some level of respect for it. Yeah, he's a scumbag and he's a liar and a fraud, but at the same time, uh, this was just a massive course change. And he was able to sell himself as some sort of social justice crusader and make tens of millions of dollars off of it. Now, granted, he had a lot of help from the media and everything else, so you could say it really wasn't that difficult, but still, um, hell of a con, hell of a scam that he's running. Number two, you may remember, speaking of scams, Jessica Krug, the African studies professor who was, uh, who was white, but claimed to be black for many years. Video has surfaced of this person back in 2019 when she was still pretending to be black. And here she is on a Columbia University panel seemingly justifying and defending 
some gang members who hacked apart a 15-year-old kid with machetes. And she says that it's a, it was a revolutionary political act and seems to have um, a not very disapproving attitude about it. Watch. How many people in this room are familiar with um, Leandro Guzman? Feliz. It's a 15-year-old boy uh, who was murdered in the Bronx last year. Um, so if you're in New York, you probably heard a lot about this. Um, <clears throat> And the narrative around it is that he was an innocent kid who was mistaken for a bad kid, right? He was the kid who was um, hacked apart with machetes in front of a bodega in the Bronx. Um, and the idea is that he was mistaken for someone else um, by Trinitarios, right, who are a Dominican gang um, that comes out of Rikers, as most of the radical politics of New York City has done for many, many years. Um, but the part of the story that gets emphasized in different ways is that he was an explorer, right? Which is a program that the NYPD has to bring youth in um, to eventually work for them. And so when I think about this politics of silence that I'm talking about in the archives, right? And how silence can be a really radical presence historically, I think it's a radical presence today. Um, when people talk about snitches get stitches, Right? or when we think about um, a history of anti-apartheid st struggle in South Africa and necklacing, right? um, and that kind of violence towards people who are collaborating or who are working against uh, their communities, we have to consider a radical moment in 2018 in which people are using machetes to hack apart a 15-year-old boy who's working with the police. Now, this is not the point, I suppose, but my first question is, how the hell did anyone ever take that woman for... A, a black person. I, I, she's paler than me. She sounds like a valley girl. Uh, I mean, how did, speaking of scams, how did this go on for years? Couldn't everyone tell she wasn't black just by, you know, looking at her? Did she surround herself with visually impaired people? Did she, did she work at a camp for the blind? I, I, I mean, I, I really don't. It's, it's amazing to me that that person passed herself off as, uh, as black all those years. But really, the, it, it, I guess it's not that amazing. The reason she got away with it is that we live in a country where everyone feels like they have to take everyone else's self-identification seriously, no matter how obviously absurd it is. So when, when she went around introducing herself as a black woman, people were afraid to just go, uh, no, no, <laughs> no, you're not. Uh, you're, you're not that. I, you're certain. I, I don't know exactly where you're from or what, but uh, no, no. To use basic common sense is considered an act of violence now. And so people were afraid to do that. And everybody forfeits their common sense willingly, um, you know, uh, uh, choosing wokeness over, over common sense. We're at the point now where I could walk into a room and say, but howdy, folks. Great to meet you. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Jamaican woman. And uh, also I'm 72 and pregnant. And I can fly. And everyone would feel obligated to say, oh, okay, great. Nice to meet you. How's Vietnam these days? That's where we are. Um, and that's, that's, that's how she got away with it. That's, it. I guess it's a similar thing to Colin Kaepernick. I want, I want to, the positive side of me wants to laud them for being great scam artists. But then I realize the culture and the environment has made it so incredibly easy to run these kinds of scams. Number three, Michelle Obama is offering some marriage advice. In a recent podcast, she said, quote, um, there were times that I wanted to push Barack out of a window. And I say that because it's like, you've got to know the feelings will be intense, but that doesn't mean you quit. And these periods can last a long time. They can last years. Periods of wanting to murder your spouse can last years. Um, you know, having murderous rage towards your spouse for any amount of time, let alone years, I, I, I'm not sure that that's actually good or healthy or normal. Um, I haven't been married for as long as as the Obamas have been married, but you know we've we've got nine years under our belt. Uh, you know we have four kids, and so we've been around the block a few times. And I can say that I've I've never wanted to push my wife out of a window. I can say that, which actually would make for a very romantic Valentine's card. Honey, I swear I will never chuck you out a window. A little too sentimental, I don't know, but I you know, I'm I'm a I'm a romantic at heart. Number four, finally, TEDx London has, oh, no, not, not finally, this is number four. We've got one after this. TEDx London has announced that it will no longer use the word women and instead will use women with an X instead of an E. So, uh, Wimixen, Wimixen, 
Uh, they explain their decision here. They say, why we're using Wimixen. No, that's not a typo. Wimixen is a spelling of women that is more inclusive and progressive. The term sheds light on the prejudice, discrimination, and institutional barriers Wimixen have faced and explicitly includes non-cisgender women. Actually, okay, there's a, there's a lot to un unpack here. Um, or maybe there's nothing to unpack. This is just a load of nothingness. This is utterly vapid, meaningless. Women with an X is more inclusive? How? How exactly? It sheds light on prejudice. How? What? Why? When? Where? So many questions. Um, I, though I, I do appreciate this new leftist trend, I guess, of, of injecting the letter X into words randomly. Because it demonstrates that progressivism has no ideas of its own. No real vision, no plan, no goal, no coherent thought of any kind to offer. It's really reactionary in the most literal sense of the word. Because it simply reacts to what already exists. Its whole thing is just to arbitrarily tear down and get rid of what already exists. For no reason other than just to do it. Um, that's the only discernible or vaguely discernible reason to replace women with wimixin. It, it achieves nothing other than to get rid of the word women. And the only problem with the word women is that it's a word people have used for a long time. And so we're going to get rid of it for that reason. Uh, it's the same thing with Latinx and, and all of these, uh, or Latinx. I'm, I'm still not clear on how to pronounce any of these words. Um, or maybe you're not supposed to pronounce them. I don't know. It's like... Uh, you know, Prince replacing his name with a symbol. Is it that kind of thing? I'm not sure. Number five, finally, for our most important story of the day, huge controversy ignited yesterday when Kim Klaichik, a congressional candidate from Baltimore, she's the woman who made that viral ad about Baltimore uh, where she announced her campaign. She, she posed uh, for, for a picture at Jimmy's Seafood, which is a Maryland institution, best crab cakes in the country, in the world, on the planet, without question. But the picture sparked debate because, as you could see, she's eating sushi with a fork. Uh, and the comments about this have been vicious, all focused on the fork, because people say you're supposed to use chopsticks when eating sushi. But let, let me just say right now, and, and, and I will say this publicly, and I really did ap appreciate this, this picture from, from Kim. Um, I am also a forker, a, as we call ourselves. Maybe we should think of a different label than that. Uh, I eat sushi with a fork. I've been doing it for years. I also have endured the scorn and disdain from my fellow man because of it. But it is time that we forkers come out of the shadows and speak our truth. There's nothing wrong with it. I use a fork for sushi. Yes, I do sometimes use a fork for pizza, for hamburgers. I use a fork for anything. It is, a, it is, a, it is a, one of the great inventions in the history of, of, of mankind, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. So I appreciated that from Kim Klaichik. Hey, you. Uh, yeah, you. You right, you right there. Hit the subscribe button right now. Do it, do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It's somewhat appreciated.